In this video, we're going to create a workgroup cluster. So a workgroup cluster exists on machines that are not domain joined, right? And we've always had a requirement in the past, well, right up until Windows Server 2012 R2 anyway, to have those machines joined to the same Active Directory domain. So workgroup clusters were first introduced for uh, Server 2012 R2 and are supported in 2016 with the addition in 2016 of multi-domain clusters. So today I can actually have servers joined to different domains, but in the same cluster. So we can see here, this cluster is gonna be created out in the DMZ workgroup. And that's not an uncommon thing, right? Out in the DMZ, I don't want domain joined resources. Maybe I'm concerned about exposing Active Directory out there because that's the area that's most vulnerable to attack. So we've disjoined this machine from the domain. It's in the DMZ workgroup. There are other prerequisites that must be accomplished before we can do this. So the first thing is on the local server, every server that's going to be a member of the cluster, I have to create a user account and I have to make that user account a member of the administrators group, the local administrators group on this machine. Now. Legitimately, you can use the built-in administrator account. And if you use the built-in administrator account, you can actually skip a step. But because we used this uh, MJ Murphy account that I created for this task and made a member of the administrators group, we have to do this. And what this is, of course, is a PowerShell command for creating and placing a parameter value into a registry key. And we do that with the new item property commandlet and specify the path switch and the path to the place in the registry where that should be created. In this example, Windows current version policy system. The name is the local account token filter policy, and we set the value to one. We enable that policy. And that's going to enable our not built in account to be able to do the job. Now, in addition to the filter policy and the local account, we have to set the DNS suffix. And here, and so you can see we're in the local TCP IP properties of the NIC card, and we've appended the DNS suffix to the local NIC. And to the cluster communications NIC. And we can see that here. And this, of course, is the name of the Active Directory domain that we will not be a part of. Once we've got all of our prerequisites in place, we can now go ahead and create the workgroup cluster. This is the other node in the cluster. And you can see on this node, I've already run the validation test, right? The first thing that we do is we run the validation test. And if we look through these, we can see that these nothing failed, but I do want to call out a couple warnings that I got here and tell you why I am dismissing them and moving ahead. And so the first thing here is uh, that we're warned that we're not a member of a domain, but we know that, right? Then we've got some concerns around the DNS suffix search list, but I've validated that. That's right on every NIC. So I'm going to go ahead and create the cluster. The nodes do not have the same software updates. Now, guys, you may have run into this. There's a problem. It's a known problem. There's a number of discussion threads on social.technet.com.microsoft.com. And it's the cumulative update patch from January that's having a problem on a number of servers. And it's funny because, you know, the two VMs are identical, basically, completely identical, rolled out at the same time. I haven't done one to the one that I haven't done to the other. And the fix for this is a long and complicated one. So I'm not worried that I'm one software update out of pace between the two. I'm going to go ahead and create the cluster using the nodes that we specified. So we come in here, give the cluster a name, and we'll call the cluster DMZ. We're going to use the 77 IP address for these, each of the subnets. 
And we can see that's finished up. We've created the cluster DMZ. We'll finish that up. And the failover cluster manager updates. And I can see my DMZ cluster is ready for further configuration and management. And this is how we deploy workgroup clusters.